Hello everyone. Uh, this is a bit of an early comeback, but I really, really just felt like doing a video. Uh, I still got braces across my uh, front teeth, so I might be lisping a little bit. Apologies. So what's so important and so exciting to lure me in front of the camera? Well, two important games for me are releasing quite soon. One is, of course, Dragon's Dogma 2. If you've watched any of my PS3 coverage, you know that Dragon's Dogma is one of my holy grails. It was one of the first games I got on the PS3 via the PS Plus subscription back then, and I've been playing and replaying it ever since. I'm counting the days until March the 22nd when Dragon's Dogma 2 comes out. I've got the poster, I've got the t-shirt, I am ready. But that's not the game I want to talk about today. I'm also quite excited about a much smaller game that releases at the end of February, so not long to go. And that is a very old favourite of mine, Shiren the Wanderer. It's a mystery dungeon game. Now, those have always been rather niche games, especially in the West. People might be more familiar with the uh, mystery dungeon games for Pokemon. Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon. There's a whole bundle of them. And they're all really nice and they're great for just relaxing and zoning out. That's what I find. That's how I play them. The difficulty is not too high, so you don't get that um, head-scratching frustration level you might get with other Mystery Dungeon games because they can be tough incorporating that rogue-like element. The first one I ever played... Yep, simply called Mystery Dungeon Shiren the Wanderer for the Nintendo DS. And that game kicked my butt so hard and I turned into a complete adoring masochist for Shiren. Absolutely loved it, even though I never managed to finish it. It's that hard. But then Shiren came to the PlayStation Vita. That was hugely exciting for me. You know what a Vita fan I am. I think I'm pretty well known for it. Obviously, I got the limited edition at the time. And it's called the Eternal Wanderer Edition. And it was published by Axis. And I was so thrilled to have it. And I don't think I've ever shown it to you. Let's have a look at it today. Because it is a nice one. It's not a big limited edition, but it's got uh, everything that I value in a limited edition. First, of course, the game. It comes with a hardback art book. And it says on the back, Shiren 20th Anniversary. So this game has quite a long history, especially in Japan. The mystery dungeon genre goes back a long way, of course. I think it's a type of game that will only ever appeal to a certain kind of a gamer. And you probably know whether you fall into that category or not. I just seem to really enjoy this game loop. And the thing about Shiren is that it is 
really unusual in the types of items and gear you get and how they're used. I would call it eccentric. It's a really eccentric kind of game, and I guess that appeals to me. So there's a foreword here from the publisher. Let's see what they have to say. Auspicious tidings, intrepid wanderers. Yes, hello. It is with great excitement that I present to you this art book chronicling over 20 years' worth of Shiren's trials and tribulations. Within these pages, you will have access to iconic imagery featuring series artist Kaoru Hasegawa with contributions from Akiman. Their amazing work and raw talent have helped give life to the quirky cast that dwell within the myriad worlds our plucky wanderer has traversed. And quirky is a very good word to use because that's exactly what this game is like. Shiren the Wanderer is accompanied by a cute little sidekick, a ferret called Copper. Shiren and Coppa's adventures have spanned many years and many releases across many different platforms. Only a handful of these amazing stories have made it to US shores, but with your continued support and a little luck, I think we'll be able to see more of Shiren and Coppa doing what they do best. The Shiren series means many things to many people, but to me personally, I think it can be best summed up in one word possibility. In every Shiren game, there are near limitless possibilities of what you'll encounter on your journey. Be it epic loot, crafty monsters or helpful allies, you're never really sure of what you'll find around each corner of each dungeon. I hope you enjoy your journey through this book and may Reva smile upon you and your own adventures. So Reva is the god who controls the three dice that determine the fortunes of all mankind. And Reva dwells in the Tower of Fortune and the Dice of Fate. That is the full title of the game. Nikomaneki Village is your hub in this game. There are a wealth of facilities here. I will show you just a few. And hiding in the hotel are also some secrets and Easter eggs. Here's the license shop and you can buy friendship licenses. And this is the game's way to explain whatever you need to know about the various features. You can pick up all sorts of handy hints. The villagers tend to have plenty of profound advice and others just plain tease and annoy you. This is the special Shiren humour. This guy wants you to become his servant. If you say yes, he becomes a recruitable ally in the dungeon. So I guess he becomes Shiren's servant. Here we meet a truly intriguing character. Again is a big cat and a renowned hunter. You can recruit him if you meet certain conditions a bit later in the game, and he's well worth having. Well, he's a man of a few choice words. The dungeon centre is your training dojo, 
And when you're starting out with the game, the best thing to do really is to go through the beginner tutorial, which will teach you all the skills you need to survive the early part of the dungeon. Uh, by the way, this game is chocker with mini games. If you love mini games, you get your fill here. They're almost everywhere, and in particular, the hotel houses quite a few. Just one really quick game, okay? It's really quite funny. I told you it was quick, didn't I? <laughs> and I get a slumber scroll. You'll be checking your backpack an awful lot because that's where all your important items are. It's a pretty basic affair, I have to say, although each item has a detailed description for it. And you really, truly have to become acquainted with all the different items and what they do. I wonder whether they've improved the backpack at all for the new game. Apart from the main story dungeon of the Tower of Fortune, there are heaps of extra dungeons you can do, and they all have a fun twist or bonus to them. You can rescue other players out there who are in trouble, you can do a spot of shopping here, although I practically never do, because all the good stuff you will find in the dungeons without having to pay extortionate prices. The storage lady is a godsend. This is the must facility. Anything that you value and don't anticipate needing in the dungeon and want to keep safe, you store. Because you know the drill with roguelikes, if you don't make it out alive, you lose all your stuff. You see how I already have some items stored in that Presto pot? And every pot has its own unique identity in terms of how it can be used. Uh, why am I keeping the hard peach? Because it's useful for filling up your tummy. Yes, you do need a stamina as well. Uh, this tanuki or raccoon dog will give away special items but only against uh, passwords which are not available in game so you got to somehow figure them out yes but i have a big secret tip for you if you look at a special bracelet i'm featuring in this video that gives you a big clue about the key word or phrase to use as a password. Keep your money safe at the bank. There are thieves and thugs roaming the dungeons. We will leave Chiren for the moment, heading off to Destiny Trail, which is the introductory series of dungeons that leads you to the actual Tower of Fortune itself. We'll catch up with him later, tackling the first Tower of Fate. Which is also available on the Switch. Now that version I bought only recently, um, obviously digitally on the um, eShop. It wasn't a sale, ridiculously cheap. I thought it would be nice to be able to play the game again, but on a somewhat bigger screen than the Vita, and simply get myself ready for the new Shiren game. What's this new game? To me, it looks amazing, and that's why I'm so excited about it. So I'll show you a few clips from the trailers and stuff that's available via the publisher's press kits to give you a little impression. A 
A few months after their adventure in Tsukikage Village, Shirin and Kopa hear rumors of pirate gold. On their way, they dream of a girl calling for help from the belly of a monster. Who is the girl? And what is the hidden treasure? A new adventure for Shirin and Kopa begins. What awaits the wandering duo? The ever-changing Mystery Dungeon. You will undoubtedly fall many times, but only then can you find the key to success. Overcome various obstacles that stand in the way using knowledge and experience. New elements are added to the game, making it more challenging and fun to play. Each time you enter a dungeon, data on enemies you encountered on each floor, as well as information on items you found, are recorded. No matter how many times you are defeated, the knowledge and experience gained in battle are never wasted. If you get defeated, call for help using the rescue feature. Players from all around the world might help you. In addition, this title includes the new Rescue Self feature. With it, players can try to rescue themselves. Sometimes you need luck in order to survive. If you can obtain a shining sacred item, you will be one step closer to conquering the dungeon. Its base value is higher than that of the normal versions, and can sometimes come with special runes. If you still find yourself stuck in an adventure, try training at the Monster Dojo. You can freely summon tools and monsters, as well as adjust your player level at will. With parallel play, you can share data with players around the world to enjoy a variety of ways to play. You can challenge the dungeon with everyone at the same time and see who beats it first, or take turns going through a single adventure. The possibilities are endless. As Sheeran explores Serpent Coil Island, strong foes bar his way. Treasure hunters, mysterious ninjas, and hostile recluse monks, to name a few. Will Sheeran be able to repel the approaching threat and find the treasure hidden in the island? Rise and rise again. Take Sheeran to new heights. Sheeran the Wanderer, the mystery dungeon of Serpent Coil Island. Coming February 27th, 2024. First run bonus item is a Sheeran sticker. Looking at the older footage of this Sheeran game, which is, I think, number five in the main series, and looking at the new, the sixth game, Sheeran game, so what you'll notice straight away is there's been a major upgrade visually to 3D. And the characters really come alive. I do like the 2D. It's a, it's a traditional art style that served video games really well. And I still enjoy it. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. But they obviously wanted to make the move to 3D. We'll have to see how successful that is. There are other Japanese franchises that tried to make the move, like we recently had Disgaea, uh, with their sixth entry in the series moving into 3D, and there were quite a few issues, as you may recall, if you are a Disgaea fan. And yes, I'll be talking about all that in the future once I've got my teeth sorted out, etc. Uh, Rune Factory is another franchise that had to make quite a few adjustments moving into a larger open world design with 3D characters in it. It's not easy, especially if you're a smaller developer and you have only a limited budget. So I'll be really keen uh, to see how they cope with that, but also just how enjoyable the game is, because that's the thing about Shiren. It just collars you, and you think, oh, I'll do just one more dungeon run, you know, that one, and yeah, you're hooked. 
Oh, if I can get those items into a pot and, you know, take them with me. What is this? You put items in a pot? Yes, you do in Shiren. You get all kinds of different pots where you can keep certain items in them and then take them out as you need. It's like having an extra large hold all you're carrying with you into the dungeon. It's full of touches and features like that. I also noticed with the trailers for the new game that the backgrounds look not particularly highly detailed. They look a bit more like a lot of Japanese games in the older style do. I'm reminded of games like God Wars, another favourite of mine, where the backgrounds look a bit like an old PS3 game where you get not terribly good textures in the background. Yeah. Okay, but it's a dungeon, you know, we just need the basics. But having those quirky characters uh, pop into life in 3D, well, that's going to be exciting, I reckon. I also suspect that they might have uh, tweaked and streamlined the gameplay a bit further to accommodate modern playing styles in the sense that People often don't have the time anymore as they used to in the past. Whatever gameplay time you have is valuable and has got to be rewarding, I suppose. But there's no way around it in any Shiren game. You will occasionally fail and there will be dungeon runs that will probably end disastrously. But there's a whole bevy of measures you can take to prepare for potential failure and like store your precious items and your money in a warehouse so you don't lose them. You pick up so much as you go through a dungeon and every time you experiment with new equipment and items it just never gets boring. Here we are with Shiren and two allies in the Tower of the Past. That is the first and easiest of the Towers of Fate. A quick look at the allies, Jiro Kichi and Tao. I just want to say that it is miles easier being in a dungeon with allies than being on your own. Have money ready to purchase the services of an ally if required. It will make things so much easier. The first thing we do, of course, in this dungeon is step on a trap. There are loads of them. Fortunately, a fair number of them are not too bad in terms of damage they do. There is a scroll you can use that will reveal the traps on one particular floor. What to do if your inventory is full? I hate throwing useful stuff out, so the only solution is to start using a pot and organising my items. And the empathy staff goes in the pot. I've used up all the space in the pot. Time to pick up that fancy seed. And I always immediately check new items just so I'm aware what they are. Tinkerer status is a really nice thing, but it does not last very long. In this room, there are three floaties and a bag of money, which as it turns out is an end dubber. That's Shiren for you. Weird stuff happens all the time. So much quicker and easier with companions. We made quick progress and have already reached the set of stairs to the next level. Uh, just a matter of clearing away a few pesky enemies. Uh, just one comment about the technical side of the game design. The programming is just phenomenal. Uh, being a roguelike, the game obviously has procedurally generated dungeons, which is not easy to achieve with balance. I can honestly say nothing has ever felt unbalanced, unfair or poorly executed. We are on level 7F now, and the monsters 
look a bit stronger, I fancy. Metalhead is true to his name. But I kept upgrading Shiren's equipment throughout and that really paid off, I think. Here we fight a swordsman for the first time and watch closely how our equipment is upgraded as we defeat him, including the runes. But Shiren lost his precious shield. Such are the vagaries of fate in this tower. He's eaten the upgrade seed, so is now in Tinkra status. A new enemy, a crab. Look at how the bright sword is powering up in Tinkra status. Backtracking, we find our precious shield again. Ooh. Quickly re-equip it. Just look at the attributes of this shield. You gotta love having a shield precisely for 2pm. Being able to read scrolls at night is a huge advantage. It means you don't need to haul out a torch or have one ready to read a scroll, otherwise you can't use it. Basic preparation would tell you that you really should have some basic herbs to replenish HP in your backpack, but I don't seem to have any. I previously relied on just picking them up in dungeons, but as you see, this time round, I got none so far. And Shiren is fairly low on HP. I'm checking all my other items, but none of them also replenish HP. Always buy some herbs, put them in a pot and take them with you. And this is the end of the Tinkra status. It's not long, but it did as well and got us through some bigger fights. Suddenly you notice how Shiren's HP is trending upwards fast as he's walking through the dungeon and fighting enemies now that the Tinkra status is finished. So it is a double-edged blessing. In exchange for greater power, you lose the ability to replenish HP. That bright sword really is something the way it powers up. Look, we've reached the stairs. Yes. Tower of the Past Top Floor We're back in Nekumaneki, and I finally remember there are the other two Tanukis. But go down the stairs, and there is Ponta with his lottery. Please enjoy Copper versus Ponta. <laughs>
tomorrow is another day full of promise of more dungeon adventure. Uh, let's have another talk with Gen, the great hunter. In fact, this is the very first conversation because I'm playing it on the Switch for the first time. <laughs> accusing us of being rude what a cat we've got some work ahead in New Zealand we would say he's up himself maybe there's time for just one more mini game how about explosion rocks no Shiren is tired let him rest I hope you enjoyed this taster of Shiren Shall we have a look at a bit of artwork? So here we have Shiren the Wanderer. And of course, cute little copper. They really have done beautiful work with these illustrations. More copper. Can't get enough of copper. Nice illustrations for the game's sense of humour. Now, a lot of these characters in the older 2D games are obviously sprite-based in the dungeons. So you, you don't actually see an awful lot of detail unfortunately and I'm hoping that's one of the things that the new game in 3D will remedy. Now the final picture in this art book says nonary bracelet. What is the nonary bracelet? There's a little steel box in the limited edition. And look at that. One nonary bracelet. It's a crossover item with the Zero Escape series. Also, of course, Spike Chunsoft. The nice thing about it is that it is well made. You can feel the quality. The emblem is actually quite heavy and the armbands are flexible. So let's see, is it really a true bracelet? A true bracelet. And if your wrists are slightly larger than my rather thin bony ones, it should fit really nicely. This is the sort of extra bonus item in a limited edition that really is the cherry on the top. It'll either make it or break it in terms of design and quality. And this bracelet is one of my treasured possessions. I might forget exactly what is in some of the other limited editions I have, but I always know exactly that there is this bracelet in this limited edition. There's also a soundtrack in the limited edition, uh, featuring 10 tracks. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. Shiren the Wanderer, my love for the game series, and my excitement for the new release. I am bound to be talking about that one in the future. As always, thank you very much for watching. I'm preparing to leave 
for Serpent Coil Island. I'm packing my bags. I will see some of you there. Please keep well. Enjoy your games. I'm Food for Dogs. Bye-bye.